Okay. Yeah, remember there is this letter that was written by a priest to somebody in Belgian Congo. Mm. And the core of the letter is that uh, when these guys arrive, mm -hmm. they should seek first to destroy African spirituality. Because that is where the force comes from. Yeah, yeah. Then they were told to preach the gospel of poverty to Africa. Mm -hmm. So many of my items have been salvaged from, uh, f Pastor. let me call, fanatical pastors who had collected them to burn them. <laughs> so I've salvaged these things Thank and uh, put them in my museum, much to their annoyance. Mm -hmm. Great, so my name is uh, Mutuku Amuindi. I am the founder and director mm. of Kamba Cultural Center and Museum. Mm. Uh, this museum specifically is for preserving the Kamba culture for posterity, both tangible and intangible culture. How did the dream begin? 1996, I got a scholarship to study in Sweden. So I went to Sweden and uh, during weekends, one of the days I was strolling in Stockholm and I saw a museum. They had advertised that they would be showcasing artifacts from Africa. Mm -hmm. And so I became interested. I said, oh, Africa, and here we are very far from home. Yeah. So I decided to go and check, only to find there were artifacts from the Kamba community in Kenya, my community. But then, as a student, it was very expensive to get in that museum. So I raised some money and got in, borrowed a few shillings from friends. I got in, and true enough, the artifacts were really Kamba artifacts. Mm. They had been collected around 1920s. Mm -hmm. And uh, the description was okay, and, but some of them, they were so rare, personally, I had never seen them. I was seeing them in uh, distant lands, far from home. Wow. So it got me thinking, now, what will happen to the other things that have not been collected? And from there, the dream was born, 1996. So I came home, and the dream was still there. I talked about it. I tried looking for people to support, but everybody was like, uh, you are taking people back to the days of darkness. The culture was associated with witchcraft and it was going against Christianity. Mm -hmm. So I started collecting uh, items, I started collecting stories. Then came 2020 mm -hmm. when we were to work from home. Mm -hmm. And so I was at home, then I decided now I need to exhibit wow. these items. And I put up a big exhibition and I advertised on social media and it sent shockwaves in the country and it created a lot of friction from the family because of course I was seen as uh, taking people back. It was considered as work of the devil. Uh, I was thrown out of the church. Uh, the priest told me to abandon the project because it was taking people to the days of darkness. Mm -hmm. And so I resisted. And up to today, the museum is on. I'm still struggling to finish construction. The artifacts are there. Now, from 2020, I have received a lot of visitors. I've received universities, mm -hmm. both from Africa and overseas. I've received researchers. In fact, I think I've received 20 researchers mm -hmm. doing doctorate, doing a master's. I've received uh, people who are interested in culture. Mm -hmm. These holidays, a lot of people brought their children to learn the Kamba culture. Mm. Because the culture had no problem. Mm. Culture is a way of life. Yeah. Culture is who we are. Mm -hmm. So if you abandon who you are, who do you want to become? Exactly. So this is the key question. Because if you abandon your culture, you will not thrive in another person's culture. No. And that's why we, I have decided it is a long journey. Mm -hmm. It is painstaking. Even the donors are not interested in individual projects, of course, because why are you preserving these things, especially in a Christian background? They say, no, this is not right, this is not what.
that I ask myself, for example, take for example the Akamba drum. Yeah. The wisdom that went into making that drum, and there are various drums. There are drums covered both sides. There's a little drum to put under your armpit, on a drum that you can carry, and all of them produce different sounds. Yeah, they respond very quickly. The sound is different. Yeah. You see, they have tightened. Tightened immediately. You see, they respond very quickly. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. And they were made to, that way because whoever made them knew what sound they needed. Yeah. So it took years to perfect. Now, you come here one day and say, this drum is useless and you throw demonic. it and you, you, it's demonic, you burn it. So many of my items have been salvaged from... Uh, let me call fanatical pastors who had collected them to burn them. <laughs> so I've salvaged these things Thank and uh, put them in my museum, much to their annoyance, because they think now I am taking people backwards. And so this is the journey I'm taking. This is the, the struggle I have, that people think this guy is taking people back to the no. uh, whole day. So that is the challenge. But uh, I am not giving up. I will pursue the dream to yeah. the ultimate end when I will see all collections in one building. It is not for me. It is for humanity. Yeah. Yeah, because all cultures are important. So I think one thing that uh, we should take away from this is that there is nothing wrong with culture and when you abandon culture, you abandon yourself. Yes, you abandon your roots. You abandon your roots. Culture is our identity. Mm. And culture is who we are. Mm. And the Akamba have a saying that says, mm. If you abandon your culture, you will never thrive in another person's culture. Yeah. And of course, I think much of our culture has been diluted and discredited by the coming of uh, Christianity. Yeah because it was all labeled demonic. Look, for example, when I was doing research to open the Kalamba Museum. Mm -hmm. Kalamba I, Museum. Okay. Yes, I found that mm. when you became a Christian, you were forbidden from growing sugar cane. You were also forbidden from keeping beehives. You were also forbidden from growing uh, sorghum because these things were used in sacrifice yeah. by Africans to sacrifice to their gods. Yeah. They would liberate beer, yeah. which was made of uh, sugar cane and honey. Yeah. So they were forbidden. Yeah. They were told, don't plant sugar cane. It's demonic. Yes, that crop is going to make you worship other gods. Do not plant sorghum. Do not make traditional beer, our traditional wine. Yeah. Yet, the same bacteria that causes fermentation in our wine is the same that causes fermentation in other wines from the rest of the world. Mm. Why was ours banned? In Kenya, there is where you see chiefs walking all over, arresting people because they are prepared traditional wine. Surely, sure. what is that? And, and, and not arresting people because they are, prepared, they are buying wine, importing uh -huh. already made wine. They are not arresting them because and you see now, these imported wines, crooks have gotten in the system. They make poisonous things mm. in the name of wine. Mm -hmm. While our traditional wine was made from sugarcane juice. Yes. And fermented for three days nicely. Yeah. It was very healthy. Mm. And that is why. Because this wine, scientifically, is a source of probiotics. Mm -hmm. And that is why you will never get our people having things like colonic cancer, things like uh, having issues with constipation and all that. Mm -hmm. Because that wine was, I had very healthy and useful bacteria, bacteria, bacteria yeah. which we have now mm -hmm. been told it is wrong. You know something that uh, with the um, way that we also prepared wine, yeah. and anyway, the way we did things, yes, we it was very divine, very sacred, yes. yeah. and you had to give everything a lot of respect a sacred respect yep. like yep. divine respect yes when you make a beer yep. you make it in such a quality because you're going to first of all 
libated to the ancestors so and it is connected to it the could divine. not be adulterated yeah because the ancestors will be very annoyed with you yes and if you had anything many times the gourd will split yeah and all the beer will pour and that is why when i'm collecting artifacts mm -hmm. everybody who gives me the artifacts or sells to me mm. but they don't sell they ask for a token yeah because they tell me i'm giving you this together with the spirit wow. that is in it mm. and that is why beer would go for three days mm. three was sacred yeah because of uh, what the Akamba called Gaimombi, Gaimolungu, Gaimatuangi. Yeah, the Trinity. Yeah, the Trinity. Wow. God the Gaimombi, Gaimolungu, Gaimatuangi. Gaimombi is a God the Creator. Creator. Gai Mulungu. Mulungu. Is overall. Overall. Oh, yeah. is the Almighty. Yes. And then Gai Matuangi is the he, he who, split who split the fingers. The finger. Who created you? Yeah. Yes. Namumbi is a is a is a is a female. Yes. A female. Yes. Yeah. So we knew this thing. So mm -hmm. what was wrong mm -hmm. with that? Nothing. Nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. Before let's say eighteen hundred, mm -hmm. before they come. So you we all know mm -hmm. that uh, the Africans were forced into Christianity. Mm -hmm. Because how come the bringers of Christianity stole our land, they colonized us, mm -hmm. they killed our people, mm -hmm. and they sold a lot of them into slavery. Mm. Do you believe such a person would bring you a good religion? No. So we, we, need, that, we yeah. need to rethink this religion mm. because the bringers tortured us, mm. killed us, colonized us, mm. stole our resources. Mm. So surely, they would they, the taught. last thing they would do would be to bring a good religion. So this religion is bad. It's also part of the stealing. It is part of the scheme. Yeah. L let me tell you a story of uh, some priests mm. who were in uh, Kilungo mm. one time. Mm. So it was at the height of Mau Mau mm -hmm. and uh, people were being drafted to fight the white man. Mm. So the white man had organized for villages to be ravaged and people to be arrested and all that. Mm -hmm. This was taking place at night. Mm -hmm. So one of the catechists, mm. they were out to defend their village. Mm. Then he saw the local priest with a gun, wow. beating people and arresting people and throwing them in a truck mm -hmm. to take them to be tortured mm -hmm. here in the river where they, they had the torture camp. Mm. He asked him, Father, you are in this? The priest pointed him with a gun and fired. This guy ducked. The bullet didn't catch him. And they wrestled the father to the ground and took the gun and they fled. This tells you, mm. these guys came with a mission. They did. Not to we take anybody to, to heaven, yeah. <laughs> but to steal and ravage and plunder. Yeah. That was the mission. That was so mission. from that day, this guy desisted from going anywhere else and gave up. Yeah. He gave up going to church mm -hmm. because now he knew this was a grand scheme. Yeah. Because and when you know what happened in uh, 1886 during the Berlin conference, was it 86? Mm, the, the partition for Africa. Partition. Mm. So when the Europeans came here, they had a plan, a very elaborate plan, yeah. but they just did not explain it to the Africans. No, they didn't. So when they, when they come, but we had prophecies. Yeah, we had Tsukemao, the prophetess. Tukimau, yeah, and also we had prophets from other tribes. Yeah? Yes, from other but countries. From Akambas, we had uh, Siokemao, yeah. who prophesied and said they, these people are coming. Yeah. At the very uh, least, the Africans had no the, the big picture to understand mm. the plan that is there to mm. colonize and extract. Mm. But now we have the full picture, we know hap what happened, but we defend with blood and we defend with our whole being mm. so for me i actually don't really understand it but that's what that's the case yeah remember mm -hmm. there is this letter that has been going around uh, online mm -hmm. it was written by a priest to somebody in belgian congo mm -hmm. and the core of the letter is that uh, when these guys arrive mm -hmm. they should seek first to destroy african spiritu spirituality because that is where the force comes from. Yeah, yeah. Then they were told to preach the gospel of poverty to Africa. Mm -hmm. That the poor shall inherit the earth. Now, if you inherit wow. the earth, if, that verse that says, dwell on verses 
that emphasize on poverty mm. and also dwell on verses that emphasize on forgiveness mm. so that the atrocities that we do to them, mm. they will forgive us. And then tell them the poor are respected because they will be never singing forever and they will inherit the earth. Now, if you inherit Kenya alone, mm. what will you do to it? What wow. sort of uh, misguided uh, approach wow. was that? Wow. So this letter, and this letter said, mm. don't respect these guys when they visit you, don't give them a seat. Mm -hmm. Keep them standing so that they know that they are lower than you. So it was a horrible letter. So they actually, you know, one of the big problems that affects us up to date affects me mm, up mm, to date. Yes. And you know, I live in Austria, so yes. I'm living in a white, uh, yes. uh, a white country. Yeah. But I realize that whenever I am in the presence of white people, yeah. I diminish. Yes. I become less. Because, because I'm, I've been uh, conditioned, conditioned yes. that first of all, this is God. Yes. Because the God looks like that. Yes. The God that we have, the yes. pictures. The one presented to us, to yes. Us. yes. This is God. Yeah. And then this is Master. Yeah. The language that we, actually in my school, yes. when I went to primary school, yeah. we were not allowed to speak Kikamba. Which is your language? Which is my language. We were not taught Kikamba. Mm. We were taught, we were taught in English. Yes. We were taught Swahili as a subject. Yes. And when you were caught speaking Kikamba, you'd be hung uh, uh, this here. Yes. Saying, I am stupid. Yes. So, w this is still something that is telling us. Yes. There is something wrong with us. Yes. We are less. Yes. When you are speaking Kikamba and you are not speaking English, immediately mm. someone thinks you are no not educated. Yes, and uh, when they come home with their kids, mm. They forbid you from speaking to them in vernacular. Yeah. Does speaking a foreign language mean you are intelligent? But the foreign language is their vernacular. Exactly. Yeah. So we need to understand that uh, mm. foreign language mm -hmm. is not a measure of intelligence. Yeah. But this is what people think. This is what we think here in Kenya. Yes. yes. When I went to Austria, I found people who asked me, how did you sleep? And I really, they are asking me how I slept. Yes. Someone asked me, how did you sleep? This is an engineer. Yeah. This is a very education, educated person that does not care about grammatical yes. English because sure. this is just a, 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 a tribal language from their neighbor, exactly. the English. Exactly. They are Germans, they are Austrians. They don't care. They don't care. <laughs> me. Yeah, me, me and you and others, we need to start this gospel where we tell people that um, the measure of intelligence and success is not based on... Uh, how fluent you can speak in a foreign language. Yeah. So for me, I love my language. Mm. And that is why it's this year when I will now start doing uh, documentaries with uh, English subheadings. Because there are yeah, subtitles. Because we are there watching are, from out Yeah, there are people out there who need that. also to understand what yeah. we are doing because mm. knowing other cultures is important. It's important. And borrowing some good aspects from one culture to another is important. important. But it does not mean you abandon yours. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with your own country. It doesn't mean yours is wrong. Yeah. It doesn't mean you abandon. Mm. Because if you are not fluent in thinking in Kikamba, yeah. you will not be fluent in grasping another language. You know, when I was in Sweden, mm. these guys were always correcting me. So I asked them, do you know my local language? Thank you. Because I know your language, yeah. at least 70% of it. Yeah. But you have no idea about my language. So, let me speak you as wrongly, because yeah. you don't know no, mine. You, you have no idea of Kikamba, for example. I think we have a long journey to, go. to decolonize yes. our people. Mm. We understand the colonial masters had their own agenda. Mm. And the agenda was not more than theft, mm. grand theft mm. of resources, and enslaving people to work for them and all that. And then ask ourselves, Africans need to ask themselves, mm. if our culture was so evil, so backward, why did, they why did they steal the artifacts and put them in their museums? If our knowledge was so backwards, why did they need our knowledge? Because it's the slave's yes. knowledge yes. to plant uh, sugar cane. Yes. It's the slave knowledge on cotton. Yes. It's the slave knowledge on all the things that they were able to Even on brewing. Them. On Even, brewing, yes. everything. It was this intricate knowledge. It was also the, the indigenous knowledge yes. that allowed the, the Europeans mm. to pass the what they call the white man 
mm. uh, grave, mm. which was infested with uh, dangerous animals, mm. and only the locals knew how they get through. Yes. So the locals gave the Europeans the way, the map. Mm. They mapped the way, the whole place. Mm. They gave them the medicine, mm. the, the how to be able to survive malaria. Yes. And they also helped them to go through these places without getting killed by the lions yes. and the animals. Yes. So if our knowledge was so backwards, why is it that it is our knowledge that actually helped the explorers yes. to even understand the continent? So we can say confidently that uh, we had everything organized. Mm. Our knowledge was not backward. No. It is still ahead. So we need to revert to that knowledge. That knowledge that would make my grandfather walk through Savo and not be touched by a lion because of a chant, because of a powder he was carrying. Yes. That is science. That is science. That knowledge that we would go herding cattle and make, draw a line and no animal would cross that line. That is advanced physics. Yeah. It is not witchcraft. Yeah. It no. is a science. Mm -hmm. And we need to know this science. Mm -hmm. We need to revert back to that science. Like for example in my museum, mm -hmm. I have uh, a wood tablet mm -hmm. that the Akamba would record events. Wow. They would record their property, mm -hmm. they would record uh, uh, major episodes mm -hmm. in that wooden thing mm. and uh, there is only one guy now left who can read it mm. in fact I'm going to make a documentary with him yeah. when I get home mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because nobody can interpret that language yeah. Yeah. it is incisions made into wood others are cut in v-shape and all that mm. so they would record things mm -hmm. so whoever comes after them will be able to read in 19 this because happened. this tablet I have mm. Is this guy was able to tell me in 1910 mm. there was something that happened in the skies. I don't know, the Halley's Comet. Mm -hmm. It is written in that tablet. Mm. It is telling me the owner of this tablet has also recorded how, how much property he gave to buy his wife. Mm -hmm. The owner has also recorded mm -hmm. some floods that happened. Mm. And so, personally, I could not read anything. Mm. But this guy could read. Yeah. Because he knows. Intelligent. So are those not people who are organized? Those were very organized. Yeah. Speaking of lesbianism, mm. there was homosexuality in Africa. Yeah. How did it... What was the place of homosexuality? Because there is, there is a way that people say, yeah, they, they, this homosexuality, but we have our culture. And the question I'm always asking is, mm -hmm. yeah. No, if these were called... Your culture is who you are, and in Kikamba we say, Dutia kwen, ukona yanesa kwen. If you abandon your culture, you will never thrive in another person's culture. Embrace your culture, it's your roots, it's our roots. Thank you. Thank you, Mwenda. Mwenda, Mwenda.